Number one, it says a 5 by 5 square and a 3 by 3 square can be cut into pieces all fit together to form a third square. Part A says, find the length of the side of the third square. Well, if you actually do it out with like cutting it with paper and stuff, you get the length as root 34. And then for part B, it says, in the, di in the diagram at the right, mark P on segment DC so that PD equals 3. Then draw segments PA and PF. Calculate the length of these segments. Okay, so I'm going to draw it on an axis because it's easier to understand. So this is the first square, second square, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And P is right here. And it gives us that PD equals 3. And we know AD is 5 and FE is 3. So when we draw the sides in, we know that we are going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. So to find this length, all we have to do is add 25 plus 9, which equals 35. We take the square, sorry, 34. And we take the square root of that. And we know that's our length. And obviously, if it's a square, then this length is going to be the same, root 34, but just to prove it, we know that PC equals 2, CE equals 3, so it means PE equals 5, and it's 5 by 3 again, so it's going to be the same number, root 34. Okay, so part C says segments PA and PF divide the squares into pieces. Arrange the pieces to form the third square. So basically, if we move this part and put it up here, and then move this part, and put it up here, then we get the square with side length root 34. Okay, for question two, it's a continuation, and it says, change the sizes of the squares to 80 equals 8, and EF equals 4, and we draw the diagram. Where should point P be marked this time? Form of the third square again. Okay, so this one is going to be bigger. And this is A. B, C, D, E, F, G. This is 8. This is 4. So if it's going to be somewhere around here. And we know that D, E is a length of 12 total. And we basically want these two triangles to have the same side length. Then we know that D, P is going to have to be 4. And P, E is going to have to be 8 for them to do the exact same triangles. So basically, P should be marked at the length 4, and it says form the third square again. So if we take this section right here and move it up here, just like we did with the last problem, and this section, and move it right here, just like we did with the last problem, then we get this square that, yeah, we get the square. Okay, so problem number 4 says, instead of walking along two sides of a rectangular field, Fran took a shortcut along the diagonal, thus saving distance equal to half the length of the lower side. Find the length of the long side of the field, given that the length of the short side is 156 meters. Okay, so let's say this is the field, and Fran walked across the diagonal. It gives us that the short side is 156 meters, and we can put, we can put the long side as x. Okay, so basically... What we're going to do is find the lengths of both sides individually and then set up an equation and solve it. So we know obviously that this side, if Fran walked this way, would just be x plus 156 meters. And, sorry, it's really ugly. x plus 156 meters equals, and if we use the Pythagorean theorem to find this length, then we get square root. 156 squared plus x squared. But here it says that um, the diagonal saved half the length of the longer side, so we have to add an x over 2 to this side. Okay, so basically now all we have to do is isolate and solve for x. So right now the equation we have is x plus 156 equals root 156 squared plus x squared plus x over 2. If we want to solve for x, then we want to get this on this side so we can square the whole thing here and get rid of the square root. 
So basically now the equation you have is 156 plus x over 2, if we subtract x over 2 from both sides, equals square root of 156 squared plus x squared. So now if we square both sides to um, get rid of the square root, we get 156 squared plus, wait, sorry, that's a lie, 156 plus x over 2 squared equals 156 squared plus x squared. Okay, so now for this part, we have to FOIL it. So we'll end up with 156 squared plus 156x plus x squared over 4 equals 156 squared plus x squared. So we see that these cancel out because we can subtract them from both sides. And then now we're left with 156 x plus x squared over 4 equals x squared. And now to solve this equation, we should get all the x's on one side. So we will have... Actually, we should multiply everything by 4 so we can get rid of the 4 in the, de in the denominator. So now our equation is 156x times 4 plus x squared equals 4x squared. So then we have, if we subtract everything on this to this side to move it all, we'll have 3x squared minus 4 times 156x equals 0. And then if we pull out the 3x, we'll have x minus 208. I used my calculator. And that equals 0. Now the only way for this to equal 0 is if either this part equals 0 or this part equals 0. And for this to equal 0, we know that x has to equal 0. And for x minus 208 to equal 0, then x has to be 208. And for this problem, only 208 makes sense. So our answer is that the length of the long side is 208. Number 5 says, let a, a, sorry, let a equal 0, 0, b equal 7, 1, c equal 12, 6, and d equal 5, 5. Plot these points to connect the dots to form the quadrilateral a, b, c, d. Verify that all four sides have the same length. Such a figure is called equilateral. So I'm just going to draw, um, I'm going to graph these points, and it's going to be really ugly, and I'm sorry. But... So if point A is at the origin, and point B is at 7, 1, which I guess me is around there. Um, C is at 12, 6, which is up here. And D is at 5, 5, which is like around here. And then I'll draw in all of the lines, and we have a quadrilateral that looks like a rhombus, but we have to verify that. So if we want to verify that all four sides are equal, then we would just have to use the Pythagorean theorem for each side. So side AB is pretty straightforward. Um, the coordinates of B are 7, 1, so this side is 7, this side is 1, and this um, the diagonal is root 49 plus 1, because it's 7 squared plus 1 squared, equals root 50. So now we're hoping that all four of our sides would be root 50, but we have to check. So if CB makes triangle, a right triangle, and we know that the coordinates of C are 12, 6, and the coordinates are, of B are 7, 1, then if we subtract 6 and 1, then we get this length is 5, we subtract 12 and 7, we get this length is 5, and by using the Pythagorean theorem, we get root 25 plus 25, which equals root 50. Yay, it works. Okay, so now let's try side DC. This one is the same as the first triangle we did of length AB. And this side, because um, the length of D, sorry, the coordinates of D are 5, 5, then we know that this side is 1, this side is 7, and this side is root 50. And then for side AD, we know that since D is 5, 5, A is 0, 0, then these side lengths are 5 and 5 which is the exact same triangle as this one. So we know that the length of AD is root 50, 
and that verifies all of them. Okay, number six says, the main use of the Pythagorean theorem is to find distances. Originally, it, however, it was regarded as a statement about areas. Explain this interpretation. Okay, well, this is actually really simple. So if we have any right triangle, let's just use a 345 triangle because that's like a really basic one. And we just attach a square to the end of all of them. This side's three, this side's four, this side's five. Um, and we draw the grid. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually really ugly, but it doesn't even fit, but... <laughs> Um, two, three, four. This area of the four by four square is going to be 16. This area of the three by three square is going to be nine. And the area of the five by five square is going to be 25. So nine plus 16 equals 25. And this literally just seems like the Pythagorean theorem. And that's because it is. Okay, so number seven says, two iron rails, each 50 feet long, are laid end to end with no space in between them. During the summer, the heat causes each rail to increase in length by 0.04%. Although this is a small increase, the lack of space at the joint makes the joint buckle upward. What distance upward will the joint be forced to rise? Assume that each rail remains straight and the other ends of the rails are anchored. Okay, so if these are each of the rails, and they're both 50 feet long, and during the summer, sorry, um, they buckle upward by, because they each grow by 0.04%, or they expand, then it'll look like this, because these two ends are anchored down, so they can't move. So basically, what we're going to be using here is Pythagorean Theorem again. And if we're trying to calculate this length, and it says that it's 50 feet, increased by 0.04%, then by using our calculator, we'd just be multiplying 50 by 4 over 10,000, which equals 0 0.02. So we know that this is 50.02, and this side is 50.02. And now, just use your calculator, because it's literally not possible to do this by hand. Well, it is, but like, you don't want to do it. Then we know that this length, if we do 50.02 squared minus 50 squared, it equals um, 1.414, and that's our answer. Okay, now number 8 says, in the diagram, AEV is straight and angles A and B are right. Calculate the total distance DE plus BC. Now this one's really easy, and I don't really feel like drawing the diagram because I'm really bad at drawing, and... I just assume that you already have it. So DE, if you just use the Pythagorean theorem, would be 15 squared plus 10 squared, square root. And then CE would be square root of 20 squared plus 10 squared. And if you just plug that into your calculator, then you'll just get 40.39. And that was number eight. And number 9 now says, it's like a variation of the problem, it just says, if AE equals 15 and EV equals 15, would DE and EC be the same? Well, obviously it's not going to be the same, but we'll just calculate the answers anyway. So, if DE, I mean, if AE and EB are now 15, then our um, equation would look like this. Square root of 15 squared plus 15 squared plus the square root of 20 squared plus Sorry, I was the wrong side. Square root of 15 squared plus 10 squared, which, if you put that in your calculator, is 39.23. And, yeah, these obviously aren't the same number. And that's it. For number 10, I'm just going to draw the picture really fast. So, basically, these are 90 degree angles. This is AD, which is 15. This is... B, C, which is 10, and this is E. And it says to set AE as X and EB as 30 minus X. So basically, they want us to find a function using lengths X and 30 minus X to find the lengths of E, D, E, and E, C at any point of E. Like, wherever E is, the length of D, E, and E, C changes as a function of AE. So basically, we're trying to find an equation so that we can find the function wherever you put E. 
So basically, we're going to do the same thing that we did with number 8 and 9. Um, we just use the Pythagorean theorem, but this time we're using the variable x. So we're not going to get like an official number. So it's going to be 15, x, 15 squared plus x squared plus square root of 30 minus x squared plus 10 squared. This is our equation. So whatever, wherever we put uh, e, so let's say a is here, and let's say x would be around 15 here, then we just plug 15 into our equation, and that's how we'd get the length of this and this. Okay, now, so the second part of the problem is asking, find the shortest, or find the value of x that produces the shortest path from d to c through e. So let's redraw this diagram as a, d, b, c. This is 10. This is 15, and this would be E. Okay, so if we want to find the shortest path, then if you just think about it, we would just want a straight line from here to here because the straight line would make it the shortest path possible because there are no bends in it like this would reflect down here and come down here, which would make it much longer than having just a straight line down. But our problem is that this straight line down isn't point C, it's below the line. So all we have to do is take it at this point, make this point E, and then make this 10 and bring it back up here so that this is line EC, and that is how it will be the shortest. I hope this is clear, and if it's not, then just try rewatching it because it's very important that you understand this. Okay, so now we'll take a look at these angles. Now, because this line is just reflected across this axis, this line right here, then these two angles are the same because they're transverse angles. And then because you reflected the 10 down from here to here, then this, these two triangles, um, E, B, C, and E, B, Y, are the same triangles, so this angle would be the same too. Now, because these are both 90 degree angles, and these two angles are congruent, then angles D and Y also have to be the same angle because it would just be 90 minus this angle for both of them. So if these two angles are the same, that means all three angles are the same angle, which means that these two angle, these two triangles, A, D, E, and E, C, B, are similar triangles. Now if they're similar triangles, then we can easily find the length of X using the ratios of side length triangles. Basically, if you have two similar triangles, any two sides that you divide will be equal to the corresponding sides that you divide on the other triangle. So if we want to find x here, and we know that this side is 15 and this side is 10, then we could just set 15 over x as equal to 10 over 30 minus x. Now the way we would solve this is by cross multiplying. So we would cross multiply these and get the equation 10x equals 15 times 3, 30, sorry, 30 minus x. Now this would be 10x equals 450 minus 15x. We move the x back to that side, so we get 25x equals 450, and if you divide 450 by 25, x equals 18. So now we know that x equals 18, and if eb is 30 minus x, then eb has to be 12. And we already know that since these two triangles are similar, that these two angles are the same. So that's our conjecture about the angles e, e, aed and bec. Now if we go with a protractor and measure these angles, then we get that both of these angles are 40 degrees.